Welcome guys, welcome to Arjun M Learning Point. Today's topic is from chapter 1 of Classic Science. Where does the food come from? Use headphones for better quality. And let's get into the lesson. First, I we in morning we eat a breakfast. In noon we eat lunch and in night we eat dinner. All of them know this and in between we eat some snacks. But wait. Where does the food come from which we eat? For example, in morning you eat omelette. The omelette is comes from egg. Where does the egg come from? It's from the hen. So this is all what this chapter is. It's, it's from where does the food comes, plant as a food, and what do animals eat, or only this chapter. Now, now we are, where does the milk come from? Cows, even some of them drink goat milk. In desert and all, they will drink camel milk. But most of them drink cow milk, so cows rice rice we all eat um, boiled rice because the unboiled rice would not be it it would not bite up easily so where does the unboiled rice first come from the unboiled rice would be grown in fields and it would be cultivated and removed from the remain part of plant packed in sacks and comes to our home now that rice we take and put it in a container and add some water and boil it so it becomes soft and fluffy to eat okay so rice from rice plant vegetable curry actually the babo do was only one ingredient but here it's it consists of many vegetables from form they Spices, spices also from farm in India. Spices most is mostly cultivated in Kerala. Now water, <laughs> we all know water from fresh bodies, water fresh water bodies, and salt from sea waters. Now vegetable are grown in farm and spices are also grown in farm. Okay, the above three examples, what can you infer? The the thing we can infer is the, the food we eat is either from animal or plants. Is the milk from cow is an animal, the hen the egg from hen is an animal, the rice plant from from which we get rice is a plant and vegetables from form it's also vegetable is also a plant. Now plant as food. Now paddy as per it would be the process of same process of rice. They will harvest it and re actually what I may shortly told there is this this would be the paddy rice rice plant and the seeds would be here but it would be covered by an outer covering that outer covering is not edible and this plant remains part of plant is also not edible the but inside these seeds are there which are edible which is their rights your seeds are edible first what's edible the plant pot which can be eaten or known as edible i think all of would be all of you would um noted it in this slide okay they will cut harvest the plant and remove this pot and remove that outer covering and they get the seed so as they see packs comes to our homes okay now parts of plant the parts of a plant are the flower leaf fruit stem and root actually flower turns into fruit and fruits turns into vegetables okay okay now all these pots are edible yes these all pots are edible but according to the plant in mustard plant we only eat the leaves and seeds which are edible others aren't 
but in banana plant uh, banana plant there are more edible parts like we eat the stem we eat the, we eat the leaf we eat the banana fruit we eat the banana flower when the vegetable means the banana uh, we will eat a chips okay beyond all of its parts except the root so a plant may have a single edible part or more than a single edible part or the plant fully would be edible okay let's go to rest now it's sprouts have you ever heard this word or have have your mother ever given some some moong or channa having tiny tiny white th white things on their on them yes what are the white tiny tiny things they are sprouts actually the white tiny things from the seeds give rise to the new plant at it's a uh, radical radical is a baby root okay baby root is radical now how to how to make the sprouts take some moong or channa seeds and wash them in water then leave it in a container with water for one day leave it next day drain the water from the vessel and wrap it in a wet seed in the wet cloth and leave it for another day after that the day one doing this day two the second third process and day third you can see the white tiny structures that are grown they are known as sprouts sometimes it would take another day for growing that tiny white structure sometimes it would be small sometimes it would be big depending upon the seed and the water am content in it okay note that the sprouts are rich in protein that that white color comes from it's rich in protein so uh, most of the bodybuilders take the sprouts the sprouts also washed and add some if you add some spices it would be a healthy and the tastiest snacks also okay now this is the sprout gift how it comes from the plant out it slowly comes slowly comes slowly slowly it would grow if we put in soil the water from the moist content it would slowly slowly grow here we put it wash it in water and wrap it around the wet cloth the wet cloth acts as a soil moisture okay let's go to next honey we honey we all know that honey comes from honey bees but the one thing is honey bees does not produce honey what you will ask what are you telling I have, have you gone out of your mind or something but i will explain it what i am coming to say the honey bees collect a sweet substance from flowers known as nectar and then it stores in its bee hive and convert it into honey okay why it stores in its beehive because the nectar that is the bee's food or it will be only available for a period of time in plants so they store in their beehives so we humans get the honey from the beehive and the bottled honey may also have some preservatives actually the thing is pure honey does not expire it can stay fresh for more than 1000 years but you would have seen that in bottle honey they would have put best before 12 2 years or 12 months from the packing because in that honey there are some preservatives added okay but honey fresh honey can stay fresh for more than 1000 years in egypt also they bury mummies that time they preserve their mummy's body by applying um, honey on it 
it's just an example for it. Now let's come to the animal part. As, as this chapter is very uh, small, the video length also would be very small only. Now food for animals. We are animals are classified into three groups on basis of their eating habits. Uh, we t if we take t uh, it's uh, giving birth to young types, it would buff to many classification there. But when we come to eating habits, it is classified into three. They are, that are herbivore, carnivore, omnivore. Now, what a herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore? Herbivore. They only eat plants as food. Like goat, deer, zebra. They will never eat flesh of other animals, etc. They only eat the plant as food. Now comes to carnivores. They only eat animals or fruits. The animals which eat plants, like like the lion eats the cow. They are known as carnivores. Have you ever seen a lion eating the grass or eating vegetables? No, it won't. It only eats the cow. Then how get its minerals get from the plants? Vitamins that nutrients, how does it get from the plant? As the cow eats the plant, the cow gets nutrients from the plant. So, as the cow gets nutrients, when the lion eats, the cow has nutrients. That nutrients goes to the lion. Actually, this is the food cycle. Cycle it will come. Now, omnivores. We have seen herbivores eat only plant. Om carnivores eat only animals. Now, what are animals? Omnivores. They eat both plants and animals. Example take we Have you ever eaten a non veg? Wait, wait, wait. I am telling this, but some have exceptional. There are some people who never eat non veg. Actually, they are known as Brahmins. They never eat non veg, they only eat veg. So, we can classify them as herbivores. But if you take others, we would eat egg, have meat of chicken, biryani. They are, they are from the hen, chicken from hen, okay. We also eat same time carrot, beetroot, dal with rice, etc. So, we eat both plants and animals. So, we are omnivores. Like crow, beer. Beer eats honey and also eats fish. So, it comes under omnivores. Now, let's go to the next. And it, this is the end of the lesson. If you have any doubts, please comment below in the comment section. But in this lesson, there is a last paragraph. That paragraph is our population is more and the food is not enough for each and every one. So we need to find the food production ways which were easily available to each one of us. That's the last paragraph in this lesson. We all know some of them do not get food. So we have they have we have to find ways to all that all of them get food. The population is going off, but the food cultivation is in say in the same level. So it also has to be increased. That's what the paragraph is coming to say. So it's my it's Pavitran from Arjun M Learning Point signing off. Take care. Bye bye.